God bless you, Michelle. Hallelujah. Blessings to you. Pray that you had a wonderful week. God, we honor you. And we Blessings. thank you for strength. So we lift you, God. Good morning. Pray that you're doing well. Blessings to you and your family. Good morning. Thank you for coming back, Sue. Yes, Lord. Yes. Strength like no other. Thank you for coming back, Roberta. Thank you. My strength, strength like no other. All right, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear them. Any prayer requests, we would love to hear them. I want to start off <clears throat> just thanking each one of you for your prayers and your love and your support for this ministry. We're excited about what God uh, will do. This year, this year shall be an exceptional year for each one of you. Write this down, please. I have an appointment with breakthrough. Every day I want you to repeat that. I have an appointment with breakthrough. I have an appointment with breakthrough. Roberta, you have an appointment with breakthrough. My God, Michelle, you have an appointment with breakthrough. Sue, you have an appointment with breakthrough. Wendy, you have an appointment with breakthrough. Lisa, you have an appointment with breakthrough. Felicia, you have an appointment with breakthrough. Sarah's recovery from a seven-hour brain surgery last night. Father, we thank you right now. We knit our faith for Sarah and her full and speedy recovery. Father, we pray for the strength of Sue's family as they had death in the family, you promised to be a comforter. We thank you. You said, blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Good. Excellent. Excellent. Good morning, Kiana. Blessings to you. We call Sarah whole, healed, and healthy in Jesus' name. Okay, good. All right. <clears throat> Make sure you put that down. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. Every day, make sure you speak the Word of God over your life. I have an appointment with Breakthrough. All my needs are met according to God's riches and glory. I want you to pray over your children. Your children are the seed of the righteous. Great shall be their peace. They shall be mighty in the land. Your seed... It's the seed of the righteous. Great shall be their peace. They shall be mighty in the land. Okay. God has been given us great favor. As you know, our broadcast was rebroadcast Monday night. And they got so much feedback. The lady told me they got an excellent feedback the other night from the broadcast. So we thank God. Well, before I get started, I want to show you something. My wife 
has a business called Carol's Creation, and this is her latest, good, this is her latest project, Praying Angels, Praying Angels, you can see that, this is my wife's latest project, Praying Angels, they come in the uh, small size, and they come in the large size, this is the one larger, okay, this is her new project, Praying Angels, Carol's Creation, so if you are interested, the small size is, I believe, $10, and then the larger size is $12, so, and you can just add the shipping and handling, she'll send it out to you, Carol's Creation, so, as you know, if you've been a part of our lives, that my wife is very anointed when it comes to crafts and stuff. So she has put together, uh, Michelle says, very nice. Thank you. All right, let's go this morning. Let's go this morning. We speak strength to Sue and her family. And... <clears throat> The passing of one of their family members. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17, please. Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter number 17. Matthew chapter number 17. <clears throat> Matthew chapter number 17. Hallelujah. We are expecting incredible things. I actually uh, told you all before that uh, <clears throat> I told you before that I was uh, not making any decisions uh, for my calendar yet until our 21 days is over, and uh, it's Matthew 17, uh, 24. Matthew 17, 24. Matthew 17, 24. So, my prayer has been, Lord, you fill my calendar, and you cause people to call me. Okay? I said, Lord, fill my calendar, and you cause people to call me, okay? And ever since me and my wife prayed that prayer, people have been calling. Good morning, Lisa. Blessings to you. Love you. Okay? Matthew 17, 24. People have been calling, and God has been doing great things. So... This is the year we trust God like never before, okay? Get ready for new experiences. Write that down, new experiences. Get ready for new experience, Lisa. Get ready for new experiences, Sue. Get ready for new experiences, Roberta. Get ready for new experiences, Kiana. Don't look for the same thing. Get ready for new experiences. You better, you better, <laughs> Lisa. Get ready for new experiences. Matthew chapter 27, 24. Excuse me, Matthew 17, 24. Let's read this. Matthew 17, 24. And when they will come to Capernaum, they, good, good, Roberta, good, Michelle, when they will come to Capernaum, good morning, man of God, bless you, D. Arthur. When they will come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, does not your master pay tribute? <clears throat> also, I want you to pray for uh, a real good friend of ours, Bishop Hamilton, uh, one of his churches burnt to the ground. 
So please, let's pray for Bishop Hamilton. One of their churches burnt to the ground. So let's pray for uh, Bishop Hamilton and their church family. The other day, their church burnt to the ground. And uh, <clears throat> about time, the fire department got there. They literally watched their church being burnt. So let's pray for them because we know that that is a building. We are the church, but let's pray that God give them wisdom what to do, please. Okay, so remember Bishop Hamilton uh, in your prayers in their church family. Okay, all right, Matthew seventeen twenty four. And when they will come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Does not your master pay tribute? He saith, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinketh thou, Simon, of whom do the kings of the earth take custom of tribute of thy own children and of strangers? Peter said unto him, Of strangers, Jesus said unto him, Then are the children free. Now withstanding, notwithstanding, least we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast in a hook. Take up the fish that first cometh up, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money that take and give unto them for me and for thee. I want to highlight a couple of things in this passage. For some reason, I had been meditating and the Lord led me to this passage. And he said, Michael, I want you to read this over and over. And he gave me a couple of things to highlight. The first thing I want you to highlight is this is the year that God wants you to honor him with your finances. Honor him with your finances. Okay. He said, pay tribute to whom tribute is due. Give honor to whom honor is due. Okay. This is the year that you want to be consistent in your honoring of God. Okay? God is the one that makes it possible for you and I to do what we do. He gives us strength to go to our jobs. He gives us wisdom to do our jobs. So whatever you do, okay? Number one, write this down. Honor God with your finances. Okay? Pay tribute to whom tribute is due. Okay? Honor God with with your finances. Honor God with your life. Why does the Bible, good morning, Deanna, blessings to you and your family. Why does God talk about finances so much? Because the Bible said that where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. If you want to know where somebody is, look where their heart is. He said where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. Okay? All right, watch this. Verse 27, Matthew 17, 27. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast in a hook. Take up the fish that first cometh up. Okay, get ready in this season for divine strategies. Okay? Get ready for strategies. God is going to give you strategies. Dina, get ready for divine strategies. God is going to give you strategies, Lisa. God is going to give you strategies, Kiana. God is going to give you strategies, uh, Roberta. God is going to give you strategies, okay? Get ready for strategies. We cannot be setting ourselves and consecrating ourselves and not expect to get a strategy, okay? 
you're one strategy away from your life changing. You are one strategy away from your life changing. This was a simple strategy the Lord gave me. A simple strategy the Lord gave me. He said, Michael, don't do anything for 21 days. Don't make any major moves for 21 days. 21 days, I want you to seek me in prayer, seek me in fasting, seek me in giving. 21 days, I want you to consecrate yourself. And then in that time, I'm going to give you strategies. One of the strategies was, he said, pray that I fill your calendar. Pray that I cause people to call you. Yesterday, I'm laying in the bed. I took a day of rest. I was laying in the bed, Michelle, and I got a call, and I just was resting, so I didn't want to uh, take it. Well, later on, I got a voicemail. And when I got the voicemail, it was a group calling me, and they said, uh, Pastor Bryant, our founder, wants you to be the keynote speaker at our men's conference this year. And this is our 10th year anniversary. And this is a special occasion. And he wanted you. God bless you. Man of God bless you, Arthur. And I was laughing because the Lord reminded me. He said, Michael, I will fill your calendar and I will cause people to call you. Now, I have never ministered for these people, this conference. And this is a pretty major conference, okay? But God said, Michael, set yourself to consecrate before me, and I will fill your calendar, and I will cause people to call you. The other day, someone else got in touch with me. What is your schedule like for October 12th, da-da-da-da? I told them it was free. They said, we will be calling you back very soon with all the details. Another conference I have never spoken at. I'm telling you, God is going to give us divine strategies, okay? Get ready, the author. This year will be a year of new experiences, okay? Already two things is going to be a new experience for me already, okay? I guarantee I guarantee I guarantee that God can market you better than you can. God can market you better than you can. Okay? God can market you better than you can. Okay? So get ready for divine strategies. Watch this. Jesus told him, there you go. In this season, number one, according to our text, honor God with your finances. Number two, get ready, good, divine strategies. He said, Mark 7, Matthew 17, 27. Matthew 17, 27, notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea, cast in a hook, and take up the fish that first cometh up. That is a strategy. Ope, and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. Number two, number three. Don't eat your seed. Notice, if he just takes the fish and eats it, 
He misses the blessing. The blessing is in the fish's mouth. My God. Hallelujah. Don't miss your blessing in this season. Don't miss your blessing by not following instructions. He said, open the mouth and you're going to find a piece of money. Okay. Write that down. This is supernatural provision. I want you all to write that down. Capital letters. Supernatural provision. Supernatural provision. Write that down, please. Supernatural provision. If I was you, I would get used to confessing that we're living in a time that every system in this world is collapsing. Every system in this world is collapsing. Oh, awesome. See that? Good. Good. Awesome. Hallelujah. Supernatural provision. Every system, Kiana, every system, Roberta, is collapsing. The economy of this world is collapsing. The government is on a partial shutdown. People are quitting jobs. People don't know what to do because they're dependent on natural provision. But the kingdom is open. The kingdom will always be open. And God wants you and I to live on supernatural provision. If things shut down in one area, God will have something going in another area. My God. He says, go, the first fish that comes out, open his mouth. There's going to be a piece of money in there. My God. Write this down, hidden riches in secret places. God has things on hold for you. God has things on hold for you. Who am I talking to this morning? There is something, the author that God has put away for you, that he's about to reveal it. There is something, Lisa, that God has put away for you, that he's about to manifest it. There is something, Evangelist Bryant, that God has put away for you, he's about to manifest it. This fish had been in the sea, waiting on this day. My God, kept for a purpose, kept for a purpose, kept for a purpose, kept for a purpose. Do you realize that nobody else could catch that fish? Do you realize that God put the money in the fish and the fish was waiting until a appointed time and it will show up at the appointed time? My God, you're going to see. You're going to see where has this been? And God said, I have kept it for an appointed time. I have kept it for an appointed time. Those of you just coming on, I want you to see this is Carol's creation. I was showing people at the beginning. God has given my wife a gift for cre crafts, and this is called cra Carol's creation. This is a praying angel, okay? Praying angel. It comes in small, and it comes in large. This is one of her businesses, a praying angel. The small is 10, the large is 12. If you want more information, you can email her or call her, okay? All right, so tap that screen if you're ready to walk in supernatural provision. If you're ready to walk in supernatural provision, Tap that screen. We've already got one confirmation this morning because somebody, Sister Lisa, said she was just reading this scripture two days ago. God led her to this scripture two days ago, okay? And now God is opening up this scripture to us. Number one, I want you to honor me in your finances. Number two, I'm going to give you divine strategies. Hallelujah. Number four. Three, don't miss your blessing not following directions.
Okay. Number four, get ready for hidden riches in secret places. I've been holding things for you. And I'm going to reveal them at the appointed time. And nobody can get what I have for you. Hear me. Nobody can get what God has for you. Okay. This fish couldn't be caught by nobody but Peter. This fish was set aside for Peter. Okay. Now watch this. Once you get the money. Take and give unto them for me and for thee. What you are about to experience will allow you to be a blessing to somebody else. Okay? Watch this. What you're about to receive is going to allow you to be a blessing to somebody else. What you're about to see receive it's going to allow you to pay off debt. Okay? Remember, this is for taxes. Okay? So what God is about to bring to you is going to cause you, good morning, Tasha, to be able to pay off debt. This is the year you become debt free. Do I have a witness? This is the year I become debt free. You need to make that declaration. This is the year you become debt free. He said, once you get that, pay for my debt and yours. Pay for my taxes and yours. A tax is a debt. Supernatural provision. Supernatural provision. Good, Kiana, good. This is a year I become debt free. This is a year I walk in abundance. This is the year I receive great things, okay? Great things are coming your way. Great things are coming your way. I'm expecting something big. Good morning, Wendy. Blessings to you. I'm expecting something big. I'm expecting something big. Big. Hallelujah. Yes, there you go, Roberta. Good. There you go. Good morning. Blessings to you. Hallelujah. My God. My God. Hallelujah. 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 Let's go back to 2 Kings chapter 7. 2 Kings 7. 2 Kings 7. 2 Kings 7. Uh... Verses, let's start at verse 1. I want to read that. 2 Kings 7, please. Good. Get ready, Wendy, supernatural provision. Get ready, Wendy, supernatural provision. Get ready, Wendy, supernatural provision. Want to encourage each one of you to keep going strong. Uh, this uh, consecration has been a great blessing to me and my wife. Uh, it has allowed us to spend time with the master. It has allowed us to hear some strategies from the Lord. Okay. And uh, it has caused us, okay, to be healthier. Okay. Okay. And we're on the 18th day. That means we have three more days. You all have did great. You all have did well for 18 days. Three more days. Remember, we're fasting, we're praying, and we're giving. Okay? Fasting, praying, and giving. We're just about through with the fasting. I'll still be giving you uh, the devotionals up until, yeah, three more days. Up until Monday. Monday, it will be over. Tuesday, uh the uh, fast will be officially over on Tuesday, okay? So uh, we are excited about what God is doing. Remember, God will honor any sacrifice you make to him. God will honor any sacrifice you make to him, okay? And we wanted to honor God in the first month of the year. 
the first month of the new year, we wanted to give God that month, 21 days, and honor him. All right, 2 Kings 7. A little background, there was a severe famine going on. Okay, It was so severe that the people were eating one another's children. Okay, It was a severe famine going on. Okay, People were eating one another's children. It was a severe famine. Read 2 Kings chapter 6, you'll get the background. Chapter 7, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Okay, this is what I want you to do. The Lord said, in the middle of your crisis, I don't care how severe your crisis is, God said, rise up in the middle of your crisis and declare whatever you may declare in the middle of your crisis. By the end of this year, I'll be in my new home. I'll have a new job by da-da-da. I'll come out of debt by the end of... You begin to stand up and declare the word of the Lord over your crisis. Now for this man to get up and say what he did, Kiana, it was crazy because it was a severe famine. But he heard from the Lord. And he said, tomorrow, in other words, within 24 hours, this is going to be over. Within 24 hours, this is going to be over. My God. Do you believe God enough to decree and declare over your relationship, over your finances, over your family, over your children, begin to declare the word of the Lord. He said by this time tomorrow, things are going to change. There's going to be a measure of fine flour to be sold for a shekel. Two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might this thing be? It doesn't matter who doesn't believe what you're saying. You've got to believe it. And even though the man did not believe it, watch what happens. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes but shall not eat thereof. Remember those who believe what you told them concerning your destiny because they're about to see it, but they won't be able to partake with it. And there were four leprous men at the entering of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter in the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die also. Hallelujah. Now therefore come and let us fall unto the hosts of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. My God. This is the year you move forward. You can't stay stuck. Come on. Somebody decree and declare that. I will not stay stuck another year. Come on. I will not stay stuck another year. Stuck in bad decisions. Stuck in debt. Stuck in wrong relationships. Stuck in in any connection that's not of God, I will not be stuck. They said, we can't stay here. If we stay here, we'll die. We've got to move forward. We've got to move forward. Here's another thing. If you understand uh, biblical history, okay? Lepers 
were considered outcasts. Lepers, good, Wendy, good, Lisa, good, Roberta, good, Tasha, good, Kiana. Lepers were considered outcasts. And they were put in leper colonies or cast out of the city. Hallelujah. They were put on the outside. And God says things that you have been put out of, things that you have not been able to participate in. I'm about to give you and make you privy to things that you were put out of. My God, they were put outside the city. Now God is bringing them in the city. Hallelujah. Things that you were put out of. Now God's going to make you privy to those things. People are going to have to release things to you. Hallelujah. That's good news. Good morning. Blessings to you, Tony. Good morning. Blessings to you, Sonia. Watch this. Second Kings 7. Okay. Verse number 9. Excuse me. Verse number 4. And they rose up in twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of the Israel, Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of Egyptians to come upon. Okay, this is what this is saying. God is about to deal with your enemies. God is about to deal with your enemies. Come on. The old saints used to say, hold your peace and let God fight your battle. God is going to deal with your enemies. There is something, yes, if I'm talking to you, say me, there is something you have been dealing with, someone you have been dealing with, someone has been coming against you, something has been coming against you, and God says, I'm about to deal with your enemies, hallelujah, I'm about to deal with your enemies, that person, that system, that group of people, that thing that's been coming against you, God said, I'm about to deal with this enemy. My God, God caused the enemy to take off. They didn't have to fight the enemy. God ran the enemy out of the camp. Hallelujah. You watch, you will be able to testify very soon that God dealt with that enemy, that enemy that tried to stand up against you. The Bible said, let God arise and his enemy be scattered. Let God arise and his enemy be scattered. Good. Praise him right now. Thank him for it right now. Good, Lisa. Good, Tony. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. God can deal with your enemy better than you can. Hallelujah. When they went into the camp, the enemy left. The enemy heard something. Hallelujah. God caused them to hear something. The noise of horses. And they left the camp. They left the camp. Running away from nothing. Ambushment. Good. Left the camp. Running away from nothing. Left the camp. Running away from nothing. See, God is saying, don't you fight. Don't you fight. Leave it to me. Leave it to me. And I will bring that enemy down. Leave it to me. My God. Within 30 days, my God, 30 days, 
30 days, you will see the manifestation of that word. 30 days, within that time, you will see the manifestation that God will deal with your enemy. God will deal with your enemy. And you will know that God did this thing. They may come back to you and apologize, but when God deals with this, you will know that God dealt with it. You will know that God dealt with it. Watch this, verse 7. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their donkeys, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. Okay. Not only that, for everything your enemy did to you. God's not only going to deal with your enemy, but he's going to make your enemy pay you back. Who am I talking to? Not only, not only, not only will God deal with your enemy, but your enemy is going to have to pay you back. The enemy left and left all of their horses all of their donkeys, all of their possessions, they left it. They left it. They left it for the lepers to enjoy. Watch this. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it, and came again and entered into another tent. And carried them. So they had an abundance. My God. What are you saying Pastor Brian? What's your enemy? You should be glad. When they started talking about you Wendy. You should be glad. When they tried to plot against you Lisa. You should be glad the author. When they came against you. Because if you have no enemy. You get no table. Did you hear me, Tony? Without an enemy, you can get no table. God said, I prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. They kept going from tent to tent, Lisa. Tasha, tent to tent, Wendy. Tent to tent, Sonia. Tent to tent, Kiana. And receiving all of these things. So what the enemy thought to be against them. Worked in their favor. Everything is working in your favor. Don't get frustrated. Don't get upset. Don't try to get even. God's going to use it to bless you. What the enemy tried to do to destroy you. What the enemy tried to do to harm you. God's going to turn it to bless you. This is going to bless you. This is going to bless you. It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't look like it. But what the enemy tried, God is reversing that thing and it's going to bless you. Watch what happens. Watch what happens. Verse number nine. Then they said one to another, we do not well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry to the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now, therefore, come that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied, donkeys fled, and the tents as they were. And he called the porters, and they told it to the king's house. Within the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying when they come out of the city, we shall catch them alive and get into the city. Watch this. See, 
These lepers were such an outcast, even when they came to the porter to tell the king of what happened, the king did not believe them. The king thought that the Syrians were setting them up. My God, God's going to bless you so good, Kiana. People are not going to be able to believe that or uh, what has happened to you, but you better know God's about to blow your mind. Nobody will be able to believe it, but you better know it is God. Another thing, this is so powerful, Tasha, that now the same person that put the lepers outside the city, they're coming back to be a blessing to the king. My God, they're coming back to bless their enemies. This is how you know you're mature when you can bless those who tried to hurt you. This is how you know you're mature when you look out for those who tried to hurt you. They come back to the king, Wendy, to bring them the blessing. Watch this. And one of his servants answered and said, let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, they are all the multitude of Israel that were left in it. And I say they are even as all the multitude of Israelites that are consumed. And let us sin and see. They took therefore two chariot horses, and the king sent after the host of the Syrians, saying, Go and see. And they went after them until Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments and vessels, which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. And the messenger returned and told the king, and the people went out and spoiled the tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, two measures of barley for a shekel, according to the word of the Lord. Did you hear me? My God, the word that God has spoken over you shall come to pass. God use these lepers to bring about the word of the Lord. In verse number one, the man of God got up. He said that flour would be sold for a shekel. Barley would be sold for a shekel. And now it has come to pass. I want you to be encouraged this morning, Dina. Every word that God has spoken over you, it will come to pass. Every word that God has spoken over you, Sue, it will come to pass. Every word spoken over you, Lisa. Every word spoken over you, D. Arthur. It will come to pass. Watch this. Verse 17. And the king appointed the Lord on whose hand he leaned to have charge of the gate. And the people trotted upon him in the gate. And he died as the man of God had said, who spake when the king came down to him. And it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king, saying, Two measures of barley for a shekel and a measure of fine flour for a shekel shall be tomorrow about this time in the gate of Samaria. And the Lord answered the man of God and said, Now behold, if the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thy eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And so it fell out unto him, for the people trotted upon him in the gate, and he died. So they trampled the man. The man lived long enough to see it, but he could not partake of it because he ended up dying. Everyone who doubted you will see that the word of the Lord will come to pass. Don't worry about your haters. Don't worry about your doubters. What God has spoken over you shall come to pass. Hallelujah. Come on, tap that screen if you receive it. Tap that screen if you receive this word this morning that the word of the Lord shall come to pass. Hallelujah. I don't care how impossible it seems, it will come to pass. I don't care who doesn't believe it, 
it will come to pass. I don't care how long you've been waiting. It will come to pass. If God said it, he will bring it to pass. My God. He who called you is faithful to bring it to pass. My God, get ready for abundance. Not only, Wendy, was there so much in the tents. When they went looking for the enemy all along the road, all along the road, there were garments. What does that mean, Michelle? That means ahead of you, there are more blessings. Tasha, ahead of you, there are more blessings. So God said it wasn't just the blessings, the author, in the tents. But ahead of you, there's more blessings. There are things waiting on you. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare quit. Don't you dare turn around, Kiana. Ahead of you, there are blessings. And all you got to do is reach down and pick it up. Ahead of you, there's blessings, Tony. Reach down and pick it up. Ahead of you, there are blessings, Dina. Don't you dare quit. Well, God bless each one of you. We have come to another Friday, uh, the third week of the new year. We're almost through the first month of our new year. We're in the third Friday of our new year. Third Friday. Good, good, excellent. We got three more days. Three more days. Three more days until our consecration's over. Remember, remember, we're going to sow a seed. You can sow it now or sow it within those three days. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. As you know, I haven't mentioned, but since Michelle, I'll highlight it. Today is Pastoral Favor Day. Okay. We have had three Pastoral Favor Days. I mentioned the first one. I didn't mention the last two. Okay, I want you, only if these broadcasts are being a blessing to you, I want you to learn how to sow into those who sow into you. Okay, I want you to learn how to sow into those who sow into you. And I want you to put it aside. Ask the Lord, Lord, uh, I want to be a blessing to Pastor Brian every Friday. He gives us the word every day, Monday through Friday. Lord, give me something that I could give to him. I want to be a blessing. Okay. Okay. That's up to you. But Michelle mentioned it. So I wanted to mention it today. Today is pastoral favor day. Every Friday is an opportunity for you. If you choose to, to sow into our lives. All right. All right. Remember the fast. Oh, put up the website, please. Put up the website. You can go on the website. Put up the website. We have two ways that you can give. Uh, also, somebody put up our Givelify. Put up the Givelify information. The Givelify is another option. You can go to Givelify. Go to Givelify. You can go to the website or go to Givelify. It's supposed to be one, two, three. It's supposed to be as soon as you set up an account, you can go there, and all you do is put For His Glory Ministries, Riverview, Florida, For His Glory Ministries, Riverview, Florida, and you're supposed to be able to get in there and just be able to give just like that. If somebody does that, let me know how it is. If you do it, let me know how it is. Uh, Tony asks, how does he give? You can go to our website, Tony. Uh, they just put it up there. Or you can go to Givelify. Givelify, you set up an account, and there's many options there, okay? When somebody does it, please let me know and let us know, was it simple? I heard it's really quick. F for his glory, man, dot org. Yes, yes. And, you, and just hit the donate button. Or you can do Givelify. Givelify. Okay, good. For His Glory Ministries, Riverview Florida. Good. And go to Give the Fly. Somebody put that up there. Give the Fly and For His Glory Ministries, Riverview Florida. Somebody try that out for me. 
and let me know how that works. Because they said it's supposed to be simple. I've done it, and it was simple. I already have an account with Givelify, and I just went up there. All you got to do is find the person's uh, the name. It's under worship, not charities. It's under worship. So under worship, you go there, you pull it up, and you put For His Glory Ministries, Riverview, Florida, and then you just click on it. It's supposed to be real quick. Uh, when I did it, it was quick. Uh, but we haven't used it yet for our ministry, but we're going to start using it. We put that out there as an option. Okay? So, all right. Thank you for your time. Remember, do something today to increase your value. See that? God gave that idea to my wife, Carol's creation. That is called a praying angel. Okay? Praying angel. Praying angel. My wife's about to come out with her own channel where she's going to put all of her creation. She does a lot of crafts. She does a lot of crafts. See that? Though Those are praying angels. She does a lot of crafts. See that? See that? That's another craft. See that? She does napkin sets. Napkin sets. Okay. Here's another one of her projects. Look at that. Look at that. Here's another one of her projects. Look at that. You like that? That's one of her projects. Okay. She does a lot of crafts. Yeah. Yeah, she does a lot of crafts. Look at this centerpiece. See that? That's a centerpiece she made. See that centerpiece? She made that centerpiece too. She's about to get her own channel. Her own Instagram page, whatever they call it. Okay, she, she makes a lot of crafts. Some of you don't know that, but she's about to release all of her stuff. Okay? So if you need some more information on those different crafts, Carol's creation, she has a whole bunch of stuff, uh, so much stuff, okay? Uh, all right, remember, do something today to increase your value. Number two, keep seed in the ground. Number three, keep a joyful attitude. Number four, use your words to frame your world. Do me a favor. Do me a favor, put this up there, 58 slash Uncommon Seed. 58 slash Uncommon Seed. We want you all, those of you who have, we thank you for sowing. Carol's Creations, yep. Yeah, she's going to have her own channel pretty soon. Uh, she's in the process of putting it together. I think it's going to be on Instagram or YouTube, one of them. Okay, okay. Put that up there, please. 58 slash Uncommon Seed. Okay, hallelujah. We want you to stand with us every month, every month. Thank you, Tasha, I receive it. Every month, we're going to stand with a $58 seed, and then we're going to sow an Uncommon Seed. Okay, we're believing God for some great things. All right, well, and and whatever you, see, see, the Lord gave her that idea. Okay. And you just have to be willing to put it out there. Nobody's going to know what you do, okay? And many of you, Father, I pray this year, this would be a year, a coming out year for your people, that you have given them gifts and talents, and Father, let them come forth. I command every gift, every talent to come forth. 
I command the potential that is inside of you to come forth. I command businesses to come forth. I command entrepreneurship to come forth. I command wealth to come forth. I command strategies to come forth in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Many of you have the ability to do many things, and you do it in your leisure. But this is a year you bring it forth. All right, we love you all. Have an awesome weekend. Have an awesome weekend. Get plenty of rest, okay? Enjoy the weekend. We love each one of you. We celebrate you. We honor you. Keep going. We only got three more days. Three more days until our consecration is over. I'll be sending out uh, day 18 today as I get off here. All right, we love you all. God bless you. Bless you, Dina.